Damn, I'm good looking. Well, not really. Do we have new glasses, though? Actually, my son in law gave those to me. <laughs> Coincidence. His prescription and my prescription must be exact because I can't see crap past 10 feet. And I tried on his old pair of glasses last night. They've got some scratches on them, so he replaced them. And, uh, and I can see the TV now. I can read all those little words and stuff. It's amazing. Be able to see again. You know, when I was young and handsome, when I was in the Army, they, uh, my, my eye test, my eye exam or whatever, they told me I had 26 vision. And I did. I mean, I saw at 20 yards or 20 meters or 20 miles what other people didn't see until six yards. All my life blessed with great vision. And then one day I got diabetes. And then high blood pressure. And then heart disease. And now heart failure. What do they call it? What's that called? Congestive heart failure. The, the gal, Nurse Debbie, at Poison Control the other day when I called her, asked me if I had any heart issues and asked if I had ever been diagnosed with heart failure. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she didn't seem to think that the illnesses that I'd been experiencing for the last three or four days had anything to do with the Lambda I'd sprayed. And here's the weird thing. You know, I'm, I'm a licensed chemical applicator and, and I go through a lot of chemicals you know, throughout the year. Different things, different times. Uh, a couple different sources on where I get those. Hirsch Farm and Feed Supply being one of my favorites. Um, rely on Garrett a lot when it comes to chemicals. And what's funny is is uh, I can be back in the chemical area and, and customers will come up and ask me questions and, and I do my best to answer those questions, but I always respond with, Garrett is the guy you need to talk to up at the front counter. And, uh, and then, you know, I tell them, I don't work here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> John, you should put me on the payroll. You know, but let me continue doing what I'm doing. You just send me just a little bit of money every now and then. But anyhow, um, you know, in the past I've sprayed Lambda and you know, you want to wear protective gear, uh, gloves when you're mixing it and glasses and, and a mask when you're spraying it and whatnot. And, and maybe I need to get a better mask in the past, I've used those those cheap COVID masks, and uh, you know, there's been an, on occasion when I'm making a turn. You never want to spray on a windy day, three to five miles an hour. That's going to be about my limit on on breeze. Whenever I'm going to be spraying any kind of chemical, because drift is always an issue. But making a turn while you're spraying a 30 foot wide fan. On occasion, the Lambda or, or Grazon or Buccaneer or whatever it is that I'm using uh, sometimes gets back on my face. And, and then I can feel just a little bit. Of, oh, it's almost like a sunburn. Um, breathe it into your lungs and then you kind of get that same burning sensation in your, in your throat, which typically doesn't happen. Uh, because of the mask and that was the thing that had me stumped you know I mean I sprayed I don't remember the days but there was a day of heavy spray and then a day of mowing 
and then another day of heavy spraying a couple different locations and the following day man i was just sick oh my gosh i couldn't breathe could i couldn't get my breath and you know with the congestive heart failure um you know that was really complicating things i there was a couple times i was just like thinking about going to the emergency room and i tell you what for me to call poison control or seek any kind of medical um uh treatment you know i wasn't feeling good um but apparently there's some kind of upper respiratory thing going around that's not covid even if it was covid i wouldn't i've covid jumped on me once and i was like get away from me that's a bunch of bs but uh yeah i'm feeling feeling a little bit better today yesterday morning i woke up and i was actually feeling pretty good then too and thought that i was gonna get out and go do something and uh the more i moved the the worse i felt and so i literally sat right over there there's a lawn chair you can't see it but there's a lawn chair and a couple uh burn barrels and i ran the leaf blower a little bit yesterday and we did some cleaning up got a bunch of crap stacked up on my trailer but i sat in that tra in that chair most of the day yesterday and watched my grandsons and my son work <laughs> and they <coughs> there's that cough they had a good time they did they did a good job cleaning up some things and we we did some burning too i love to burn the grass oh my goodness hey this morning i will i have to shoot a different video of this but this morning i you know about sunrise i've actually had bacon cooking and uh, i came out and was looking at my buckwheat test out here in the clay and we'll we'll talk about that some more later but uh boy some areas it's looking good in other areas it it hasn't done anything at all yet <laughs> we'll see how that how that's going to happen down here in the bottom i am going to move the camera for this so you can see this but down here in the bottom this is it's an old feed plot area that i haven't seeded in about three years i think i don't remember we did a bunch of dirt work down in there you remember 2017 here in in west plains and the surrounding areas we had a, a very very bad flood i think they ended up saying it was like a thousand year flood we had over time in some of the things that i had been doing i had some pretty decent soil down in that area and this is where we built my son's uh, lawnmower racetrack and uh, uh we had we had some pretty nice soil coming in for you know some different things that we've been doing through the years and uh yeah we had about five feet of water rushing through that area during that flood back in 2017 and it's completely covered up with rocks again and going back to will buckwheat grow in clay how will it do in clay well that's the experiment we're doing up here up here in front of the house uh, where they turned up all that clay when they ran the water line across there 20 something years ago 20 years of, of clay and rock in my front yard and i'm finally trying to do something with it i think i'm gonna do some buckwheat down in there as well i got 100 pounds of buckwheat seed in the back um you know i can probably use some of that in some of these feed plots but this would be a good place to experiment with it too and if you know me you know i love to experiment specifically if it's something that i'm going to try to sell to one of my my customers i want to be able to honestly say this is what i did and it worked ain't no bs i mean yeah yeah you know i i like to laugh and joke and have a good time and and i can bs with the best of them just ask some boys and girls up there at hirsch and some of the other places that i like to shop at uh, but when it comes to business, business is business. And I'm not going to come in with a miracle, whatever, uh, unless I have done it and it worked. I will not 
ever try to sell it to you.